The North Dakota Game and Fish Department continues to manage chronic waste and disease. The 2020 CWD proclamation has been signed. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. My guest this week is wildlife veterinarian, Dr. Charlie Bonson. Charlie, give our viewers a little background on CWD in North Dakota. Chronic waste and disease is this, this fatal disease of deer, moose, and elk. Um, you know, we know that if it uh, goes unchecked or becomes very common in a population, it can cause uh, major impacts to that population. And so we really try to keep that from happening in, in North Dakota. Uh, you know, we've been looking for it for a couple of decades now, and, and we first found CWD in 2009 in Unit 3F2, Grant and Sioux County. Um, and we've been finding CWD up there or down there ever since. Um, most recently, in 2018, we found chronic waste and disease up in Divide County in 3A1, and, and since then we've found CWD further south, uh, units 3B1 and 4B as well. Charlie, why is chronic waste and disease a concern? Yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of reasons to be concerned about CWD. It, it is this fatal disease of deer, and, um, and it's probably a bad way to die, but but ultimately we care about it because of the, um, you know, the population level impacts it could have. Um, it's, it's hard being a deer in North Dakota. You know, you have hard winters, you have uh, other diseases that'll come and go, you have predators, you have fragmented landscapes. Um, you know, it's difficult. Now when you factor in a, a disease that, you know, could become widespread and is always fatal on top of all those other things, there's a real potential to have a, a catastrophic outcome. Um, and so, you know, at low infection rates, one to two to five percent, uh, it's not much of a concern. The concern is if it were to climb and get out of control to a, to a high rate. That's when we can really expect to see some major impacts. Charlie, what do hunters need to be aware of this fall when they're in the field? Yeah, um, so there are a couple of regulations aimed at trying to keep CWD in check in, in some of our units. Um, you know, maybe the, the first one to be aware of is transportation restrictions. Um, if you're hunting out of state or hunting in a unit where we have these, these in place, so deer hunting units uh, 3A1, 3B1, 4B, 4C, and 3F2, um, then the high-risk carcass parts can't come out of that unit. So that means generally brain and spinal column. Um, you know, you, I would encourage you to look at our regulations and look for the kind of the fine details. Um, of that, but, but ultimately that means that uh, hunters are going to need to plan ahead. Um, you know, become familiar with how to quarter out a carcass. Um, you know, if you're going after a trophy, be prepared to cape out that animal in the field or, or boil that skull or, or most importantly, um, find a taxidermist or a meat locker in that unit who can help you. Um, you know, a little bit of planning beforehand is, is how you can uh, make sure that you can comply with that regulation. I encourage you to look at our regulations for kind of the fine level details of how to comply with, with the transportation restriction. Uh, that being said, if you have additional questions, contact your local game warden who can really help you work through that process and, and figure out how best to comply with that regulation. Another important thing uh, to maybe consider is that if there are adjacent units with carcass transportations in place, you can haul them, you can transport things in between those units. Um, and so 3A1, 3B1, 4B, and 4C are all connected and, and you can, uh, and so if you harvest an animal, for example, in 4C, you can use a taxidermist or a meat locker or take it home if you happen to live in Williston, for example. Um, finally, I would say that uh, if you're moose or elk hunting, different transportation restrictions apply. So just make sure to familiarize yourself with those by uh, checking out the regulations on our website. And we've never had a positive on moose and elk in North Dakota. Correct, yeah. We, we test a number of elk and moose every year, and so far there's no positives. Uh, we hope to keep it that way. So yeah, if you're hunting in one of these um, restricted areas uh, and you choose to, to not keep the head, you know, maybe it's not a trophy animal, you have a couple of options. Um, you know, obviously the animal needs to be tagged right after you harvest it. Um, but if you want, you can uh, quarter out that, that animal and uh, you know, leave that tagged head in the field, make sure that the carcass tag stays with the meat. Um, that being said, a lot of hunters are uncomfortable with that, understandably so. Um, so we would really prefer that you drop that head into one of our collection sites um, that we use for testing. Alternatively, um, you know, whether you're hunting in one of those units or across the state, 
regardless, uh, the best place for those parts to end up is in a municipal solid waste landfill. Um, you know, in areas where that's less of an option, in our restricted areas, uh, the department is uh, trying out a new option where we have a couple of disposal sites. Um, these are dump trailers located along the highway where you can drop off those parts and, and we'll take care of it from there. Um, two down in 3F2 uh, and then one will be near Belfield. Um, and so just keep an eye out for those and, and use those if, if that's what you prefer. And that information will be available on our Game of Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov? Absolutely, yep. Charlie, as far as baiting, there's some restrictions in some units around the state. Yeah, there are. Um, there's restrictions in units where we've documented CWD, uh, but we've also looked at, at data and um, you know landscape factors, and, and there's a number of units adjacent to those that are at risk of, of getting CWD or, or maybe already do have CWD at really, really low levels. Um, and so, you know, if you think about it, uh, we know that there are positive deer out on the landscape right now. You know, there's a positive animal out there and, and he's shedding this disease through his bodily fluids, his urine, his saliva, his feces. Um, if he comes into direct contact with another deer, he can infect them, um, but also those bodily fluids are infectious in the landscape uh, for long afterwards. Um, so, you know, in terms of baiting, we know that baiting brings in a lot of unrelated animals into close proximity. Um, and we also know that, uh, you know, even if an animal is by itself, if it's eating off of the same pile as other deer, there's a good chance that it's going to be eating contaminated feed. And so ultimately this baiting restriction is in place to try to reduce the overall threat of those positive animals that are out there. Um, you know, some, some folks have, a, um, have strong opinions or, uh, or maybe disagree with this. And I just want to be clear that, uh, you know, we as the department fully understand that uh, the deer congregate for portions of the year, that they're social animals, that, that these interactions do still occur to some degree. And this restriction is not a, the only answer. It's not the, what will stop CWD in its tracks. Uh, but if we think about the overall implications of this disease, that's one way that we can, um, you know, try to reduce the overall risk of it spreading among the herd. And I think that, you know, we as hunters who want to keep this tradition going into the future have an obligation to do so. Okay, let's talk about our CWD surveillance for this fall. Yeah, this fall we had to, uh, uh, you know, given cer the circumstances or current events, we really had to prioritize where we're going to conduct CWD. Um, and so this year it will just be in the, the southwest and northwest. Um, you know, a, ma a map is available online. Um, but there are over 60 collection sites, or there will be over 60 collection sites um, in those regions uh, where we collect, uh, where hunters are encouraged to drop off heads and, and we collect those and, and sample for them. Um, we also are going to make every effort to provide results within three weeks, but again, um, you know, delays may occur through a variety of things, so uh, just be patient. But Hunters who drop off heads can, can access their results by going online. Um, go to your online account and look for the license number associated with that deer. Click on it and you'll see your results posted once they become available. Uh, for the handful of deer that are, or handful of licenses that are uh, over the counter, archery for example, uh, we'll provide those results via email, text, phone call, whatever your communication preference is on the online system. Okay, hunters play an important role in CWD management in North Dakota. What are some things they can do or what, what do we recommend that they do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've been, we've been kind of aware of this for quite some time, but it's becoming more and more apparent as more, uh, more evidence emerges that first and foremost, our absolute best tool uh, for managing CWD is, is hunter harvest, is the hunter himself or herself. Um, you know, uh, healthy, sustained ha harvest over the years is what maintains healthy densities of deer and importantly it's how we get positive deer off the landscape every year. Um, so you know buy a license, go hunting, harvest a deer. That's my number one or our number one point. Um, beyond that uh, you know if you do see an animal that's sick or, or dead even for an unknown reason contact the department because we're going to look into that and, and make sure that there's nothing to worry about there. Um, 
Beyond that, just become, you know, familiarize yourself with our restrictions um, and comply with them. Uh, do everything you can to, to make sure that we can keep this thing in check. And make sure you drop your head off at one of the locations around the state. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, surveillance is critical. It's how we document where CWD, CWD is. It's, it's how we document if it's increasing or decreasing within those units. Um, importantly, it's also where we document where CWD is not. Um, you know, but in order to confidently say that CWD is absent from an area, we need to test a lot of heads. Um, and so please, you know, if, if you're uh, hunting in one of these surveillance units, uh, make sure that we get a hold of some samples and, uh, and get that tested for you. Charlie, for people that are concerned about hunting in some of these units that we've found positives, what do you, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I'll say a few things. Um, first and foremost, as I mentioned, you are our key. We need you to go down there and keep those populations at a healthy level. Um, beyond that, if uh, there are some people that are concerned about, about possibly harvesting an animal that's, that's positive, um, public health experts do recommend that if you are hunting in an area where CWD has been documented, uh, you make sure to get that animal tested before you consume the meat. Currently, it looks like the risk of somebody becoming infected with CWD is extremely, extremely low. It's never been documented, um, but we can never dismiss that as being completely, uh, you know, a risk of zero. And so uh, that's why we really defer to the public health experts who, who recommend that if you're harvesting an animal in a unit where CWD has been documented, uh, you go ahead and get that animal tested uh, before you uh, consume the meat. Charlie? So the single biggest thing a hunter can do is participate in the surveillance program every year. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. You know, keep going hunting and, uh, you know, make sure that we're able to get that animal tested for you. A lot of great information. Thank you. Thank you. For more information on chronic waste and disease, visit the Game of Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov. For wildlife veterinarian Dr. Charlie Bonson and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for the 2020 Chronic Wasting Disease Update. We'll see you again next week.